With no further ado, we have uh, Brendan Fryer from uh, Game Refinery, who is going to talk to us about how game developers have solved current marketing challenges. And over to you from Game Refinery. Brendan. Thank, Thank you very much, Oscar. Hello, everybody. Um, I guess we got a couple of slides and to go through. Yes. All right. So as Oscar said, uh, topic today is how game refiners have solved current market and challenges. We all know, let's say, there's a, a degree of, let's say, turbulence, let's say, and maybe even, let's say, forecoming turbulence, let's say, that the game market, let's say, is going to be, let's say, um, uh, faced with. Um, a little bit, let's say, about, um, about us. Um, so, those of you who are not familiar with Game Refinery, uh, Mark, uh, Oscar, do I have a, do I need a... Maybe I'll talk through the slides. <laughs> yeah, so as I was saying, that, um, just to get onto this, that there are, let's say, a lot of, let's say, um, uh, challenges, let's say, that are, that, that are coming up. Not many developers have actually, let's say, been solving these, let's say, already. A lot of the big, let's say, the companies, let's say, worldwide, that they've been, thank you so much. Yeah, so a little bit about me. Um, to those of you who are not familiar with Game Refinery, uh, we've been in operation over seven years. Uh, we work with the major developers um, worldwide. Uh, my role is to ensure growth of the company, and we do this by delivering insights and solutions to our partners uh, that are designed to meet their needs. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to identify the most common ones in this presentation. I'll provide, as well as much as I can, um, what they've been doing to solve these challenges. Uh, we change the names a little. Uh, we know that developers don't like to sh sh share their competitive advantage, let's say, with the competition. But to get on so that the, the learnings and the solutions are from, let's say, a lot of the tier one developers, uh, east and west, uh, established, let's say, regional developers as well, and, um, and uh, fast growing developers too. Uh, some of these challenges that you may already know, or let's say already have highlighted, uh, we hope to give you some ideas on how to solve them, and we also hope we can also confirm some assumptions on what you've been doing to try and solve your challenges. So. Uh, Today's top three takeaways, we start with the end, what the conclusions are. So platforms, uh, where do people play games? What's available to them? And what do developers expect to be available? Uh, questions uh, people are asking is, what should we be looking out for? What seems to be growing? What's viable and so on? Um, can we start moving, let's say, you know, to other? Can we start moving out of handhelds? Let's say, are they, let's say, um, uh, something let's say, that's relevant for, the, for us? Uh, players, who is your audience? And then very importantly, who could be your audience? Um, are you reaching them all? Are there ways to reach it? Is it only, let's say, true um, tr 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 UA? What are other companies doing? What motivates them to play? What could motivate them to play? Uh, how do we get to find them now? Uh, as we know, targeting is a lot more difficult now, but there are ways to get around them, and we'll go over some of those. And then relevance, uh, free-to-play market trends uh, are very much a moving target. I think that's what people love so much about the mobile game industry. Move so fast. Uh, many different genres, lots of hybridization, lots, let's say, of interesting, let's say, new games coming up, markets, let's say, are different learnings from those, let's say, as well. Um, so many genres, many different player types, and of course, to make it even more complicated, we're seeing hybridization in the best performing genres as well. So how can we make right decisions on what to bring to our games, and best case, just have the right short list, let's say, of features that we should be, let's say, bringing. So let's be making the right decisions, and let's stay relevant in a competitive market. So, platforms. So, uh, free-to-play is expanding rapidly to other, uh, other platforms. That is what's happening now. You're going to see, let's say, a lot of, let's say, games what have historically been, let's say, on mobile, appearing, let's say, on other platforms. Uh, it's a big opportunity to reach new and more players, uh, escape store restrictions as well, let's say, and so on. Uh, biggest examples, of course, are the Genshins, let's say, and the Diablo Immortals. Uh, that's not it. Because, of course, we're seeing very similar heart, uh, HD experiences on mobile, for example, like Apple, uh, Apex, uh, Call of Duty Mobile. The technology is there, and you can have similar, uh, similar if not, let's say, the same, let's say, experience. Uh, mobile gaming is not just turn-based, 16-bit, let's say, anymore. Those things are a thing of the past. I'm sure everybody knows this. Uh, players now expect more, and what's great is that we can give them more, too. But the main questions that have been asked are, how viable are these new platforms? And can we meet, reach more um, players if we do decide to go, let's say, uh, multi-platform? So many developers have been looking, let's say, at a PC 
and uh, free to play, let's say, on console, you're going to be seeing, let's say, a lot of that. I would advise everybody to start looking, seeing, let's say, which ones, let's say, would be, um, let's say, in new, let's say, um, platforms, let's say, outside there. Uh, the stereotype, let's say, PC, PC games will be like old guys like Oscar and I, uh, who like playing Total War and, let's say, simulation games, but that's not the reality, of course. Um, some of the most popular type uh, games, let's say, on PC, let's say, are, are Roblox, where the people, let's say, mainly play, let's say, Fortnite, let's say, and so on. You know, the younger players, let's say, are on there. It's really diverse let's say, um, uh, platform. Uh, platforms like uh, Netflix, uh, TikTok, lots of the major developers, and even, let's say, smaller ones, let's say, are really looking at those, evalu uh, uh, evaluating them. Are they there yet? Are they, let's say, viable? You know, is there an actual, let's say, um, is there a route to success there too? An external source, uh, can we be more successful if we have payments outside uh, the big players? Uh, new platforms for mobile games are becoming very real and developers are breaking new ground on those um, uh, every week. And many of the new developers, uh, HD developers, are looking to the free-to-play market for engagement mechanics. Because uh, they know that that's, that's the right test lab for what works, so it's actually going the other way. So anyone in mobile, start really thinking, let's say, about, let's say, in platforms. Many of the major um, developers are actually doing it. And then, players. So let's get the obvious stuff uh, out of the way. Uh, mobile gaming is a platform. Players just don't have one game, let's say, on their phone. In fact, they have many over, let's say, a long period of time, short period of time, medium period of time. And that spread of games, let's say, can fit to, let's say, um, a profile. So questions developers have been asking, who is your audience? And then what is their motivations, let's say, for play? That, uh, one question I always like to ask developers are, is that, do you know what the number one fashion game on the market is at the moment? And most people would say, well, is it Project Makeover? You know, is it, let's say, Love Nikki and so on? No, it's Call of Duty Mobile. That's the number one. Because mid-core players, they love their customization and decoration, weapon skins, uniforms, emotes, let's say, and so on. So uh, they like competing against others. And of course, let's say, having, let's say, their dolly dress up as well, or action figure, let's say, customization. So developers are looking at this, so that no matter the genre, um, what are the successful games doing, let's say, to be engaging, let's say, in monetizing, and then how can we get to those, let's say, players, let's say, as well? Uh, there's a real reason, let's say, why seasonal passes, let's say, in piggy banks, let's say, are appearing, let's say, in casual games, and the same way on the other side, why collectible albums and non-competitive killed events, let's say, appear, let's say, in slot games. There's a real overlap, let's say, of the audience. Uh, they're attracted by the core, but then they stay, let's say, you know, for the matter. So there's what we start thinking is, well, what other games do they play from a motivational, let's say, point of view? And again, developers are looking, what are those games they're playing? What are the features that they're being used, let's say, to engage those players? Just because it's in a casual game doesn't mean it can't work in a slots game. If the top games in slots all have particular types, let's say, of features, they can absolutely work, let's say, in casual games. Similar as well on strategy games. Well. People who play strategy games play RPG games. And there's a reason why you're going to see all of the major strategy developers are going to have a, 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 a RPG meta in their games coming, uh, coming, let's say, in the next, let's say, couple of quarters. What those features are going to be? Well, the blueprint's already there. There's successful RPG games out there. Um, we go and look at what, what have they been doing, how have they been doing it, and then start br bringing those, let's say, in, in, into their games. Which then, brings us to relevance. So how are they doing this in practice and what's been done right now and what's coming? Okay, so some of the other major um, challenges. Innovation is expensive. I mean, everybody knows this, right? The questions are, what should we do and how should we do it? And then also start looking at live ops. We need to know what good looks like, right? And then start seeing that where's the opportunity space inside there. So. With this, it's not a big surprise in the room to hear, but then, of course, you're like, how do you solve it? How do you solve, let's say, uh, uh, expensive innovation? Well, absolutely innovate. Uh, blow the doors of what's possible, of course. You know, be unique and so on. But then also, give the market what it says that it wants at the moment. What's happening with the top 20%, 15%? What are they doing? See that maybe as the baseline. That's the foundation. And then start, let's say, moving, for, uh, moving from there. Like a good example, let's say, of this would be the second biggest fashion game on the market, Project Makeover. 
The top genres for women aged 20 to 40 are match-free games, fashion games, and narrative games. And then that's what they did. They created a game that meets all of those drivers. Uh, we'll get into that, let's say, in a little bit again about how you can even, let's say, use, let's say, all of that to start looking, let's say, at different audiences as well. So, super important to be looking at the top performing games. What are they doing to keep their games relevant? And what updates are they bringing? Because again, we know, let's say, that the market is absolutely very much, let's say, a moving target. And then this is one of the next ones, hybridization. Uh, hybridization is an ultimate key to success. Look at what's working and then start bringing it into, let's say, our, our, our games. So a couple of three numbers here which are really interesting. More than 80% of casino games use collection, hybrid metas. And why is that? Because it's been working in casual games, it's been tried and tested. The blueprint is already there. There's no need to innovate, let's say, on this. Um, a couple of years ago, that was zero. And now, now look at it. 100% of the new strategy games um, are all hybrids. What type of hybrids? RPG hybrids. Why is that? Because they share the same audience, just as I said before. And then how should we be doing it? Well, there's, there's successful RPG games out there. Have a look at what they're doing. What are, let's say, their best performing, let's say, um, features. And maybe start bring, thinking about, like, you know, to bring it to, you know, to your games. And then 60% of the most successful match tree games utilize the hybrid meta elements. Uh, and that's growing, let's say, all the time. Like decoration events. I mean, how many match tree games have we seen? with a, de uh, uh, a decoration meta that's completely disconnected from the game because the mar market and the players actually want it. So, uh, if you're smart, you'll choose something that doesn't break the core, which of course is very expensive to develop and interface with the main game, but then having a nice collection renovation, uh, renovation meta that gives some rewards, like for your existing currency, for example. Lots and lots of different, let's say, methods, let's say, and benefits to that too. But it's not just features. Uh, that keep the game fresh. Uh, let's look at a couple of different examples of how, let's say, developers are doing this and have teams looking at this, is that having the additional, let's say, metas also allows you to be able to, let's say, reach out more. So Project Makeover, an, a great example, let's say, of a, of a, of a really u unique way of, let's say, using, let's say, you know, the additional meta, meta elements that they, they brought. It allows them, in their creatives, to move out of their lane without the need of having rogue ads, uh, ads should I say, which uh, potentially could generate a bad feeling with the audience. Uh, of course, no one likes, let's say, being catfished and so on. So the lines are being blurred, so I would say go for it. Uh, similar as well uh, with Puzzles and Survival, an absolute UA, let's say, success story. Yes, it's an SLG game, but their UA execution was relying, re leaning in really, really heavy onto the match tree element. There are a lot of examples of match trees of good, let's say, creatives, let's say, in campaigns out there. They didn't have to, let's say, you know, to invent, invent the wheel, let's say, at all here. Okay, and then another example we'll go into a little bit more detail, detail on, going on, let's say, from hybridization, is bringing mini games to the actual, let's say, the game. Uh, bringing mini games to your games. We're going to see a huge trend of this, this coming, let's say, this year, because they're already, let's say, being, let's say, um, developed. So, if we take a look, let's say, at uh, AFK Arena. So, it's a very successful auto-battle RPG. But what they've done is, over the last, let's say, couple of months, they've brought in a match tree minigame, a shoot 'em up minigame, and also, let's say, a dice, uh, a board dice, let's say, minigame, let's say, as well. And what they've done is, is that when they brought it in, it was really just the mini games added, let's say, to an additional, let's say, an additional, let's say, element that the players could play to keep it fresh. Let's say against all of the other, let's say, um, uh, uh, idle RPGs out there as well. But that you could play the match three game, but it didn't break the game because what it was doing was was generating more gotcha tickets and gotcha and uh, character shards, so that in essence you were just being able to, let's say, uh, uh, generate. Um, a lot of, let's say, the, uh, the currency inside in the game, but also keeping, let's say, you know, the feeling, let's say, um, fresh as well. So, uh, when they brought their uh, match three, it was a pure match three, no um, RPG, let's say, element of it as well. 90 levels, any match three developers here will know that, let's say, that's, let's say, just am amateur hour, that's a tiny amount of number, uh, a number. But it was fully lin linear, there was no monetization, but the idea was, was that it starts bringing, let's say, new gacha charts, um, a lot more, let's say, um, uh, in-game, let's say, currency and so on, 
didn't break the game, but provided something fresh, let's say, for the players, let's say, as well. Similarly as well, when they brought in the, um, the shoot 'em ups they didn't just invent this, let's say, out there. They went and looked, let's say, what were the biggest, let's say, uh, uh, and successful shoot, shoot 'em up, let's say, games, let's say, on, on the market, used that, let's say, as the blueprint, worked out what the, what the correct, let's say, um, progression would be, and yet again, starts giving you gotchas, different character shards, let's say, and so on. And they didn't stop there, because then when they brought their dice board event, which it was a very, very interesting, let's say, um, uh, P PvP event, where what you can do is you can, you can have, let's say, different buildings that generate stuff and so on. But again, same idea. Look to all of these other, let's say, um, um, uh, uh, games that actually had this, saw that it actually innovated, they had the right, let's say, blueprint, let's say, for it, was able to quickly, let's say, create a, um, a, a mini game that didn't destroy the game, but also, let's say, added. And of course, a lot of their UA, let's say, campaign was, let's say, on this as well. So, uh, I said, the, the mini game loop here doesn't take away to the main game, adds to the main game. It's still, let's say, an idle RPG, but what they do have is, is just lots of currency that's been, let's say, created, that has mini games that actually appeal to the players, which of course keeps them, let's say, relevant, let's say, as well. So, as I'm, yes, running out of time, um, we want to keep this, let's say, a tight 20. So, look, all of, we all know, let's say, mobile gaming is a pla platform. So what we've seen is all of the major, the most successful developers, be it, let's say, big or small, look to all genres. Don't just look, let's say, to your lane. Don't just look, let's say, what, what, let's say, your closest competitors are doing. Think, who is our audience? Who could our audience be? And then start looking, well, what's best to breed social features? What's best to breed IAPs? What are best to breed, let's say, events? What are best to breed, let's say, passes and so on? What are best to breed, and, and then, of course, hybridization. Because it's a way of being able to innovate fast, keep up, let's say, what the market wants, but also allow you, let's say, you know, to do, let's say, your, your own unique part as well. So with that, and I'm not going to make Oscar, let's say, too upset, let's say, I'll be happy to listen to have any questions, let's say, from anybody. Thank you very much. That was great. Thank you. So uh, I, th I think we've got, got a minute to have a couple of questions. We have, we, have, we, have, we have a minute. <laughs> so anyone got a question? I mean, I personally find it fascinating when you can actually show the, the use of this hybrid model in terms of the games. I think I mean, one of the things I wonder about is um, with all the sort of fake ad te uh, te um, lessons that we've seen, where people have started to take these fake ads and start to actually use them as game mechanics properly. Is that where this hybrid um, mechanic is coming from? Or, or are you seeing there, are they kind of testing mechanics to put into other games? Or is it actually intrinsic to the new game? So what I would say, Oscar, is at the start, it was like throwing spaghetti at the wall, what works and stuff like that. Yeah. So having like, you know, like, you know, like small little mini games and then people would go and it's like, okay, that's not the game. But then we would see less with other developers that they would actually have like the same AFK like, is, is a really great example. Yeah. Those mini games, they don't, at, to the main thing at all, but they're there, let's say, on, let's you know, the, the, the bar at the bottom, so it's not rogue, it's like I was brought here to play, let's say, a shoot 'em up I can play shoot 'em up but then the progression on those kind of pull me in, let's you know, to the main part, which is the main monetization and then they can, as well. they can sort of see how they can engage in that game and then evolve with the other mechanics that then keeps them playing. Exactly, and that's the smart, that's the smart way of doing yeah, it. Yeah, and I think that's the, the, there was an interesting conversation in Helsinki about those fake ads and how everybody hates them, but actually what we're seeing is we're showing accessibility and if you can show a reason to return in a game that gives that same sense of accessibility then it works makes sense got it uh last chance for a question if anyone had one rather than just me talking i will say in that case brendan thank you so much sir that was great pleasure thank you All right.